I've had a lot of great memories in this little car, but the time has come where we need to part ways. I need a new car, a longer range car, a whole raft of new adventures, which means this little electric car, the Kiwi EV, needs to go on to a new electric car loving home. It seems like only yesterday I was taking ownership of this 2011 Peugeot Ion, setting me off on a whole raft of new adventures. It meant learning all about electric car driving from the very beginning, with the first modification of many being a pumping sound system, because although the car's quiet, that doesn't mean it has to be quiet. After that, the road trips began, the first of which going to Vienna in Austria, and in that time I also learned about a thing called range anxiety, and had my first experience with a gas car blocking a charger called icing. The result was me learning what it's like to wait and get bored in a car park while the car charges. Following that came more range anxiety getting home, with my first experience of turtle mode. More modifications followed, including a factory armrest, which made sitting in traffic a real pleasure. And after that, more gadgets, installing the Can Ion application to monitor the battery, as I set off on another road trip, this time to central Slovakia. And that's where I once again learned about the phenomenon called turtle mode, and the stress of range anxiety. At this early stage, I was already putting the car through its paces, but this was just a precursor, because I was about to make a road trip from the east of the country, bordering Austria, all the way across to the west, bordering Ukraine, which meant going to the embassy to get a visa, before starting my journey, being the first person in Slovakia to drive border to border and back in an electric car. It was a long day of traveling, but finally I'd made it to the border, to the border city in Ukraine of Ushkorod, and there I was able to practice my Russian, which turned out to be not so successful, but in Ukraine I was a real hit with the birds, and the bears, and the churches, and I even got to try out some Cossack dancing. And after eight quick charges later, traversing the country back in the other direction, it was just a matter of time before I was about to cross the border, being the first person in Slovakia to drive border to border and back in an electric car, driving 1,133 kilometers in a car that was never designed to leave the city. I passed many milestones in my little city electric car, including birthdays, where I baked a delicious onion cheesecake and poured it on the car, which turned out to be a pain in the ass to remove. I also carried out a lot of modifications in my little car, such as uncovering the hidden gears, which weren't available on the Peugeot or Citroen versions of the Mitsubishi IMEV. It was ridiculously simple. All it involved was drilling out the faceplate, removing it, replacing it with a new one, and then enjoying the extra regen braking of B and C mode. New rear window stickers were also a staple of my electric car, spreading the gospel of electric driving but with each new season came new challenges, and as winter arrived I got busy trying out every method possible to have warm driving in the cold winter days. None of the crazy ideas I tried worked very well, so I bit the bullet and bought a diesel air heater, which meant installing it into the back of the car, installing a hole for the exhaust pipe, and enjoying warm motoring as the winter arrived. And this was appropriate because I was about to put the car through its toughest challenge yet, driving up to the mountains for a day skiing. As as anyone who's seen that video will know it was a complete disaster, but we did actually get to the ski field and managed to get a few hours of skiing in. It was one heck of a road trip and my poor little car was well out of its comfort zone, but like every mission I've tried so far, it was ultimately successful. And with the cold, harsh winter in full swing, I found a way to make my diesel heater remote controlled. It was rudimentary, but it worked using a wireless transmitter and a door actuator, and it meant that I could warm up the car from inside. After that came an awesome road trip, where I decided to race the train across to the end of the country with the loser buying dinner. I took my little city electric car while my ex, Veronica Lewinsky, took the train. It was an epic journey and I was very close to winning, but at the last moment, in the city of Brescia, with the charger being blocked, I was forced to tuck my tail between my legs and go to a gas station to recharge for half an hour. As well as learning a lot about my car's battery and characteristics, I also took the challenge up of racing the gas-powered version of this car, called the Mitsubishi iCar, and in true electric car style, I kicked its ass. Other crazy modifications included installing an artificial exhaust pipe in time for my car's two yearly inspections, because when Slovak bureaucracy says check the exhaust pipe, there better be an exhaust pipe or they won't pass it. Fortunately, it turned out I didn't need it and the car passed, and I got busy testing the car in winter wearing knee-high socks to combat the cold as recommended by Hitler. During the craziness of the years gone by, I found myself on Slovak TV more times than I can count, and perhaps the most bizarre addition to my electric car was the creation and installation 
creation of a fully functional kitchen with everything from running water to a stove to a refrigerator. And as any male car driver will tell when the snow's out, I got a chance to be five years old again. <laughs> Such a child. was fun. Do try this at home. The day has arrived. I'm driving to the transport agency to change ownership of this little electric car. The new owner of the Kiwi EV is no stranger to this model of car, having driven thousands of kilometers around Europe a few years ago in the same model. So when Janka slipped behind the wheel, it all came back to her. <laughs> and after a quick test drive, it was time to go in and sign the paperwork over, making her the new owner. And then came the moment of truth, the official handing over of the Kiwi EV <laughs> okay, key. Hang on, I should drop, ready? <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm without a car, and I've been familiarizing myself with public transport, taking trains everywhere, which is actually not too bad. They're clean and, too, okay, maybe not that one so clean, but generally they're clean and tidy. And I've been using this time to plot my next series of adventures. I've been toying with the idea of buying a Renault Zoe long range model and driving it back to Slovakia to start a whole new range of adventures. But that particular adventure will have to wait until next year because I've been busy packing my suitcase with all the summer essentials I need for a wonderful summer holiday in New Zealand. So that only leaves me to say to everyone who's been watching my Kiwi EV videos over the years and joining me on the journeys, thank you. Thank you and goodbye. My flight's not for five days yet. <laughs>